If you're interested in doing a 12 volt conversion on your 8N Ford, then this is the video for you. My dad, Dan, and I are working on an 8N with a side distributor in this video, and we're gonna show you how to put on all of the parts and the table in front of me. We're gonna start with the basics of a basic 12 volt conversion kit, which is the alternator bracket and wiring harness. We're gonna show you where every single one of these wires goes. And then there's other extras that we, that we can take care of along the way, a new solenoid, an amp gauge, a starter button, a terminal block, a key switch. You of course need a 12 volt coil, since you want to switch from six volt to 12 volt coil, new battery cables. On our website, we have these parts for sale. Our website is farmtractorrepair.com. If your tractor is in good shape and you don't need to replace these, items, you can just choose a basic 12 volt conversion kit. But if your tractor needs a little bit more attention, you can go with a premium 12 volt conversion kit, which has the basic plus some of these extras. Of course, all these items are available to add individually as well, depending on whatever your tractor needs. You know, people will choose to do a 12 volt conversion for lots of different reasons. Some, the most common I hear are you're trying to replace an old electrical system, maybe that has extra wires hanging off of it. I mean, I've seen some really cobbled together wiring systems on tractors. Maybe you're tired of your one tractor being six volt and everything else in your shop is 12 volt. So when you want to charge a battery or jump it, it's just inconvenient. Maybe you want brighter headlights. You want a charging system that actually works. Whatever the reason is, in this video, we're going to show you how to put these parts on at the end, you're gonna have a charging system that works. It's gonna be neat and clean and a safe system. We're gonna show you how to put the key switch on for safety. So I know that this video will be very helpful to you. Additionally, when you purchase the, the 12 volt conversion kit from us, we have put together a very detailed booklet with written instructions and a wiring diagram that is incredibly simple to follow. So I know that with the written instructions and this video instruction, you are gonna succeed and be able to do a 12 volt conversion on your own tractor. We are working on an 8N Ford that has a side distributor. So this is a 1950, 51, or 52 8N Ford. If you happen to have an 8N with a front mount distributor, my dad and I have made a separate video that applies to that. So you'll wanna look for that different video. Same goes for the 9N, 2N, or a Jubilee or 600 uh, Ford tractor. Those are all on separate videos. So just pay attention to this one if you have an 8N with a side distributor. Let's get to work. We have taken the old generator off and stripped all the wiring off, took the voltage regulator off, our amp meter off, and we've got it all ready to put our new stuff on. When we took the generator off, you must save this old part of the bracket right here. And the old part of the bracket is old. We had to take, in order for Rachel's bracket to fit in here, I took my crescent wrench and put on her and I tweaked it just a little bit. It was maybe a sixteenth of an inch too narrow and wouldn't allow this to go in. So make sure this fits inside here. You can see we have the first bracket already inserted onto the alternator here and that's the way that it should be configured. We have this loose so that it has a little bit of free play movement here as we tighten everything up. So as you can see that bracket's going to go right onto the old bracket. The next step is this piece which slides down here. Notice this bottom hole is going to line up with the hole on this bracket and the hole on the bracket that's on the block. So that slides down in here and then this slot is going to line up here and got it? Yep. And this curve comes towards me, towards the front of the tractor. So with that, then you have a bolt here, which I've got to align up. Ooh, I'm sorry, I dropped right out That's of the okay. hole. Get it through my you bracket. You can see this is a real with. challenge with the hose in the way and everything here. Okay. Now I'm through, I'm, I'm ready for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding you up, Rachel. I'll back up a little bit. Yep, good, got there it. There we go, okay. I think you have the I knot do. there. Okay, so you can see how that's gonna fit through there, and then another bolt on that side of the Am bracket. I? Yeah, you're lined up. Am I? Yeah. Not. I think I can see it better than you can. I think can you I? can. There. there you go. Okay. Phew. So you got, you can take a look at this here and align your bracket the same way, um, just like that. I think. We are not going to tighten anything down here until we get this all together, and then we'll go back and tighten everything up. Yeah, put this one through here, hold that in place. Right, huh? Gotta give you that. Yep. Okay, and then the next piece to this bracket is the slotted piece up here. This is slotted so that you can make an adjustment on the belt on the alternator. So I'll hold the alternator and you can set that in place there. Let me give that to you. Okay. You got the bolt for that? I do, but I don't have the nut. Okay, I got one right okay. here. So I'm gonna hold this in place and then you can see this slotted end. Oops, that's the end of my hardware. We're gonna need one more one more bolt. bolt that goes right up. Oops. 
Right okay. up here. You hold that. I'll pick that up. Okay. It's right there by your foot. I see it. Is yep. this the right one? Yep, it is. Okay. So this slides through here. Now, notice that we left everything loose. I can't stress that enough because there's so many moving parts with all that bracket. And the reason why we want to leave it loose is... we got to get the belt on there and make sure it lines up. For the belt. Up. But that's how you're going to mount the alternator to begin with. And then we'll go back and tighten it up and show you how to make those adjustments. You can reuse your old belt if it's in good shape, or you can install a new belt, that's up to you. But no matter what you do, your belt needs to go around down the bottom of this front crankshaft pulley through this groove and then slide onto the alternator like that. And that's why we left all those bolts loose is so that you can slide the belt into place. My dad's gonna tighten up all those um, nuts and bolts there, but you want to, in the end, have just a half inch to three quarter inch of free movement here in your belt so you can move that back and forth. Notice that this bottom bracket, we have kind of standing up. The alternator will work either way. If you move this bracket so that it's more downward, it'll still work, but we discuss this in great detail and we like it being up. It's just a little more covered by the hood so it's not out in the weather as much. And, and also if this axle comes up, it'll hit it uh, yeah. if you hit a bump. So we'll keep it yeah. as tight to the tractor as we can. And just a good double check too is the bottom of this bracket, you wanna make sure it's not rubbing against the radiator hose because in time that friction could cause a problem. But ours is free and clear and you should make sure that yours is as well. So while he's tightening that up, I'm gonna to talk to you about the coil. You will want to drop in a new 12 volt coil. We're choosing to use one that does not require an external resistor. Coils are sold on our website both ways. So just make sure you choose a coil with, that does not require an external resistor is the wording that you're looking for. Keep your bracket that's mounted onto the head here because you'll, you'll just reuse that and your new coil drops in like that. This is a 12 volt coil. You want to remove your six volt coil and drop that in. Before we start putting the harness on, we're gonna put a new solenoid on the tractor. And these solenoids are directional. They say BAT on this side. That's important because the battery cable has to hook to this side or they won't work. You have to salvage the little strap on the starter from before. So you just simply put it on there, put your two screws back in, tighten it down, and then we're gonna put the battery cable over here. We are choosing to put a brand new key switch on our tractor. Now these things that my dad and I are doing right now aren't necessarily required for a 12 volt conversion. If you already have a good key switch on your tractor, you can uh, leave it as is and just wire it up properly. But these are, we're showing you to put them on because they're good ideas to um, include. Your key switch is notched, so just pay attention to which way the notch goes. And then once you have it in there, there's a simple uh, washer and a really thin nut that you feed through there and tighten that up. Also up here on the dash, you might wanna put a new terminal block on. So this is what a terminal block looks like and this just goes on these two screws. You hold this here and then you use your two screws to put that on. Another item you might wanna put on is a new amp gauge. We're gonna fix this to have a positive charge when we're done. So it'd be nice to see a positive charge on the gauge. So you just slide this around like that and then there's a bracket that comes on the back side, you hold that, and then a little washer and a nut on each post to hold that in place. We are gonna check the starter button in the floor. We do not wanna bypass that because that's your neutral safety. You have to have the tractor out of gear to push the button in to kick the starter in. So it's important that if it's bad to go ahead and replace it. We're gonna check this one. We have our own meter set to continuity. It bipes when it has continuity. So I'm gonna to touch the button here and uh, Rachel's gonna push it down and you can hear the, it, it buzzes. So this one actually works. So this button's good. If your button is bad, we're gonna show you how to replace it. Okay, I have an extra cover up here in the vise and I'm gonna try to do it from the side so that you can see to get this button out and how easy it is to put back in. So I took all the bolts off the perimeter of the cover and just lifted it off. Make sure the tractor is in neutral when you take it out. You didn't shift the shift rail. Very important that it was in neutral because we're gonna put it back in in neutral. So once you pull the cover out, there's just this bolt. This is what the starter button looks like with threads on the other end of it. We're just gonna take the nut off the end and put a new button in. So it's not really that big a deal. It's keyed, it has a slot here on the side, so it can only go in one way and that locks it in. So I'm gonna work at getting it out of here. I already took a screwdriver. There's a little lock tab on the nut. So you have to take a screwdriver and a hammer and take that little lock off. So I've got it off. Unfortunately, it's a great big wrench. It's an inch and a 16th wrench to get that nut loose on that. And it's kind of in a tough spot to get to. So I'm just gonna work 
it out. Once I get it loose, maybe I can get it out with my fingers. Yep, I can. So I've got it loose. I'm gonna try to work the button out as I go to give me some slack on the nut. Now when you take it off, you gotta get this through the hole. So you gotta save that old nut in the lock washer and this part here all has to come off and you gotta save that because we gotta get it back on. This is the safety mechanism right here that the button pushes through that the tractor has to be in neutral. So when you shift it, it allows this to be in neutral only to allow that button to push through. Pretty ingenious idea um, and it works very well. The new one has a gasket right here. To make sure you get that gasket, it keeps the oil from getting all over your foot. It has a special slot in it, so I'm just trying to get it in the slot. And then we gotta get this all back together. So give me just a minute here to wrestle this all in place. And unfortunately I dropped the lock washer. Just trying not to do that. Thank you, Rachel. So Rachel and I gotta get this all in. So I'm gonna, you want me to hold the button? yep, hold the button, Rachel. And I'll put it back in the hole. Yep, back up a little bit, back up. There you go. Now I'll put it through everything. There you go. Ooh. The lock washer, the lock tab has a groove in it. We're really close. We're really close. Okay, hang on. The lock washer only goes on one way. This would be probably a lot easier if I could look right at it. There it is. So I got the lock washer on. I got the nut started. And you can see I got the nut started with the lock tab. It's just a matter now of, of screwing it in. Is it going down nice and tight? It is. So I'm keeping this straight here, the lock washer's in. I'm just gonna tighten the nut down, just like that. It's a bit more challenging from the side, isn't it? And once I get it tightened all the way in, I just pound that lock tab back down on the nut, and then Rachel, go ahead and push the button. And you can see the button comes through here when the tractor's in neutral. Simple replacement makes the tractor a lot safer. Just put it back on the tractor. There's a gasket here, so we're gonna put a new gasket on and put it right back on. It's time for the wiring harness. So don't get hung up by the colors of wires that we're using versus colors of a wiring harness that you might have. Instead, look for your two longest wires like this. We're using a one-piece harness, but sometimes you'll have a two-piece harness. So you're just looking for the two longest wires. And obviously those are gonna go from the front of the tractor to the back of the tractor since they're the longest. So we're gonna lay this down. I'm gonna set this underneath the fuel line here. This thinner wire that I have goes to the coil and it's gonna connect to the positive end of the coil. If you look closely at your coil, you'll see the markings for positive and negative. And then the negative side is a wire that comes down here and is connects to the distributor, that's your negative ground, since the distributor has that ground plate in it. Then the other wire, the thicker one, is going to connect right here to the back side of the alternator. This is a one wire alternator. It's easy, different from like a automotive style alternator. This one's just a one wire, very easy, clean and simple. And once we get these all hooked up and we get this laid out, we will zip tie this up off the manifold and we'll take care of that at the end. We are choosing to use a brand new battery cable like this one. So you attach it to the solenoid. Again, we're on that battery side, it's marked as such. And then a thick red wire or a thick wire in your harness will go on that same post with the battery cable. So you got two things on the battery post of your uh, solenoid here. Then you have this other thinner wire right here and that connects to the back side of this post on the solenoid, like here, just like that and then you can um, put a washer and a nut on the back of that, just like we've been doing all along. The other end of that wire is gonna trace through the bottom of the dash and attach to the actual starter button. If you look closely at your dash, there's a little hole, looks like a little mouse hole, and you feed that wire through there and attach it to the starter button. If your harness is like ours, when you get to the end, you're gonna have two red wires, and how do you know which one's which? That's when you use the ohm meter, so we have it set to continuity, or a multimeter, I should say. So set that there, and that is the wire that comes from the starter solenoid, which goes on the positive post of the amp gauge. By process of elimination, we know that this other wire is from the alternator, so it goes on to the negative side of the gauge. So just like that. Now the next, oops, let me set that on there again. We're gonna put another wire on the positive side, which is this wire from the key switch. Yep. Now 
we have found that the posts on this gauge are just a little bit bigger than the terminal end here. So you can just take a pair of wire cutters, snip it open, spread it out a little bit, and then it will slide over top. So once you have those two wires on the positive side of your gauge, you could put a nut on there and hold them in place. I'm not going to take the time to do that now. Okay. Just hold that the rest there. And we got the black wire yep. here from the then ignition switch. The coil wire and the black wire from the ignition switch go together on that post of the terminal block here. And we're leaving the top end of our terminal block empty. There's no wire that needs to go on there. Because that spade for the coil is open, I just want to tighten that up so it's not going to fall off. There we go. So with that, we only have one wire left at the end. That's for headlights. So if you are going to have headlights on your tractor, go ahead and wire them up and make sure that you change your bulbs to 12 volt bulbs. You'll burn out the six volt bulbs if you leave them on. With that, you have the dash all situated. We are gonna put a new ground battery cable on, which I have right here. And that'd be a good idea for you too. We like to use a braided style for the ground cable just because it's easily recognizable. Everybody knows that that's ground and it's just a safety feature to have that uh, recognizable as such. Let me give you a recap of the wiring. Since we have it all situated, I just wanna go over it again so it's crystal clear to you how it should be all situated. Remember, you are going to receive a wiring diagram when you purchase the kit from us, so you'll have that to your, to your benefit as well. So we're gonna put a battery in here, and we're gonna have this cable hooked up. It's gonna bring power to the system. That power is going down to the solenoid, and it connects also at the solenoid with this red wire that traces all the way up here to the positive side of the amp gauge. Also on the solenoid, you have this wire that comes from the back and that's the starter button. So when you start the tractor up, you're gonna turn the key and have the starter button to um, turn it on. Once you have the starter wire, starter solenoid wire coming all the way up here to the positive side of the amp gauge, on the negative side of the amp gauge, we have the wire that goes to the alternator. Also up here, you'll see that we have one wire from the key switch on the positive side of the amp gauge. Now the key switch wires, we wired them up a specific way, but really it's just an on off switch. So if you mixed up your key switch wires, there would be no harm done. As long as you have one wire coming up here to the positive side of the amp gauge and the opposite wire coming down here to our terminal block, which connects to the coil and runs all the way up to the coil in the front of the tractor, which then feeds through the coil and is ground out into the distributor. So that's the complete circuit of the wiring harness there, and you should have yours wired up the exact same way. It's important that you have a fully charged battery to make this system work. So we have a brand new battery, we're ready to hook it up. We're gonna hook up the positive cable first. The reason we do that is when we hook the positive up, if I touch with my wrench while I'm tightening it, and it's not hooked up to the ground, I don't arc myself out. So I'm gonna hook the positive cable up first, tighten it down, and when I got that all done, and it's in order where I want it, then I'll put my ground on. So I have ground going on next, and that way, again, ground touches ground, no arcing. So we're ready to go. We've added some gas to the fuel line, so we have just enough gas for it to start and run for just a minute uh, in the carburetor, and we wanna see this charge. So we're looking for that right now. So you ready, Rachel? Yes. Look at that. Very nice. Okay. I would say our 12 volt conversion is complete. It's very yes. successful. So we'll go ahead and put the radiator in the toolbox, button this all back up and um, get it all back together and our tractor will be ready to go back to work. I hope that this video is helpful to you and it gives you the confidence that you need to do a 12 volt conversion on your very own 8N Ford tractor. My dad and I have made a lot of videos on the 8N Ford. We have an engine rebuild, carburetor, distributor, Brakes. clutch, hydraulics. All of that information is available on our channel. So go back and look through previous videos and you'll be able to find those and use those as a resource to you as well. You can subscribe to our channel. That gives you a notice every time we release a new video and helps us out as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.